Yeah, what, what I would like to do is talk to you about this soulmate part of your soul um, so that you understand what I mean by that. You see, when your soul splits into two, basically it cannot experience anything in its split state without there being some appendages. And what I mean by appendages is that you need a body, either a spirit body and or a material body attached to the soul in order for the soul to start, that half of the soul can absorb its experience. Does that make sense? So actually what God created is the full soul can absorb an experience only in the soul union state. The halves of the soul need bodies to start absorbing experiences. Does that make sense? Now, so what's really happening is, if you could think of it, there's these, like, there's these cords that connect the spirit and material bodies to the soul. And, uh, and I've layered them so that you can see them as separate, but actually, of course, your soul is bigger than you are. Your soul is actually surrounding the two bodies. And the soul controls even all the physiological functions of both bodies. Now, the soul interfaces to these bodies uh, through these connections that allow experiences from the outside world to enter the body and then through the body get funneled into the soul as an experience. And so that's how we start absorbing our surroundings. So as soon as we have a body, we're individualised, whether that body is just the spirit body because we die soon after individualization, or it's both, we are now individualised as a half of a soul. In other words, we now are starting to be conscious of our own experience. Now, the issue is that uh, this half of the soul can't exist on its own without there being a body attached. Or, if you can think of it, something else attached, which could actually be the other half of the soul attached to it. So when you think about the separation process, so here you are in the combined process, in the male side, female side, as it separates, it now needs the bodies to attach to that half of the soul in order for the half of the soul to gain experience. Right? So this half it splits away at incarnation, this half splits away at incarnation, and of course the bodies are created at conception of the, uh, of the two halves. Now when you think about that, you can see, actually, that the bodies are sort of like an attenuation in a lot of ways of the soul. And this is what finishes up happening on the earth. Because we're so distant from our soul, we start living in these bodies as if these bodies are us. Can you see that? That's what we start to do. We start living in here and here as if that's me. The truth is that's not me at all. What's really me is this. And I am the masculine expression of this and my soul mate is the feminine expression of this soul, right? And what we do is when, when these bodies are attached, because we've got all of these emotional uh, injuries in the environment in which we're incarnating into, we start living in these bodies rather than living in this soul. As a result of that, we start taking on all of the environmental injuries regarding these bodies and the soul. Now, when you think about that, the first sets of injuries generally that we're the most responsive to are our parental type of injuries. And these come right down to, in fact, the first time you open your eyes after you're born, you start observing and after a while the clarity improves in your sight and eventually you can start observing quite clearly the first form of the male in front of you, which happens to be, in most cases, your father. Right? So after three or four months and your eyesight's starting to clear up, um, you start observing the real male right in front of you who's picking, in up, picking you up and nursing you. And you start seeing the real female, which is your mother. And so you start identifying emotionally with these people. So that began at the conception. But uh, as you receive more and more and you see more and more and your senses of your soul open up more and more through these bodily senses opening up, as you grow, you're now absorbing things into your soul, belief systems, belief systems that your parents actually have, right? 
Now, one of the first belief systems that starts entering your soul too is what's the ideal man and what's the ideal woman and what do you think they're going to be? Very similar to what mum and dad is, right? So this is starting to get established. So if mum happens to be five foot three, quite slim and uh, quite pretty, then your ideal, and maybe a blonde, then your ideal may finish up at, during this formulation stage becoming that. But if you find your mother quite repulsive, then it might be the flip side of that, just depending on the emotions that come at you. And the same applies to your father. If your father happens to be six foot three and, and a bit tubby in the middle and, and, a bit, and pretty solid and whatever, then that becomes your definition of the ideal man, the man who's going to make you safe and secure and so forth. And so that enters you and enters your soul. So these are not truths that are entering your soul, but actually belief systems that we come to accept as true inside of us, which could, which could be an error. Now there's no harm in having an ideal. The problem is, is that most of the time our ideals are surrounding our parental ideals, which is often very, very different from our soulmate and what they look like, what they act like and what they feel like because our soulmate is going to be an ideal for us personally, right? In terms of the mirror image of ourselves. So technically what's going to start happening now is we start living out of the soul when we start living more in our bodies. And we do that because that's what our environment does. So people on earth are taught to not be emotional, you know, even a young, young child, young child's there crying, there, 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 you know, you, you're already stopping the child from crying as you're doing this, right? And there's an emotion of distress in the mother, let's say at the time she's doing this, what's the child going to start feeling here? Every time I cry, mum gets distressed. There's going to be a responsibility thing set up. She, she doesn't have to say a word in all of this. She's just feeling these emotions. The soul is assimilating these emotions through the sensory apparatus of the bodies and all of a sudden she's starting to feel, the person, the baby is starting to feel these things. Now, the soul itself has a super set of sensory apparatus that the spirit body doesn't have. And the spirit body has a superset of, of uh, what you'd call apparatus or tools available to it that the physical body doesn't have. Now what I mean by that is your physical body is said to have the five senses, right? But the spirit body has a lot more senses than five. And the soul actually has thousands of senses that actually change and grow as you develop in divine love. So, so what we're used to here is having our senses, right? We're used to having these senses inside of us physically, but in reality what we're so used to, a spirit would, would, would if they had to live in your body after passing into the spirit world, they'd go, I don't want to go back there. Like, like the senses of your body is low much limited compared to what I can do. Like every single spirit can teleport, can you? So, so like, you know, how do you feel, how limiting is that? Like if you, could, if you could all of a sudden start teleporting and you started getting used to it and after five or ten years of doing it of our time on earth, you'd be pretty used to that, wouldn't you? You'd be, even after a few months you'd think it's pretty hot, wouldn't you? And so, and so what you would do is you, you'd feel really comfortable with that after a while and then somebody said, oh, you've got to go back to your body now. You'd be like pretty annoyed, wouldn't you? you go, why, do I, why would I want to go back to my body now? Like I can do all this stuff I couldn't do in that body because you've got a body that actually has a heightened sense, a heightened tools or apparatus in which it can, in which it can interact with its environment. So the, the physical body has a very limited set of tools in which it can, in which it can sense its, its, its surroundings. The spirit body has a superset of those tools. In other words, it has more tools available to it, but it doesn't have the tools that are available to it at the soul level. So this is the soul, and the soul has the maximum amount of tools available to it, even in its unhealed state. But in its healed state, in a six-sphere state, it has a huge amount of tools available, but then when it receives divine love, those tools all grow exponentially as well. So the soul is this ever-increasing amount of tools available to it. And that's a half of the soul. Once the half combines with the other half, then you've got a whole new set of tools available to that combined form, which is what eventually you'll start experiencing. Now, 
you could say that the soul senses are then, if you think about it from a long-term perspective, the soul senses are the most important senses that you could ever develop. Can you see that? Right. The senses of the physical body, like playing tennis, the sense of the physical body, not very important to develop in the long run. Right. But it can be fun and you can enjoy it in the short term perhaps. But in the long run, it's not going to be something that is going to be something that gives you huge amounts of satisfaction, particularly when you can teleport and do a heap of other things and manufacture whole games that we know nothing about here on Earth. You're not going to feel much like tennis. Tennis is going to be like baby land, right, in terms of what I could do in that condition. In the soul condition, those kind of things become so unimportant. So can you see how as I go through and I start growing in different areas of my self-awareness, I first start developing generally, and this is the unfortunate truth about our earth existence, we first generally start ex experiencing our physical body senses. And unfortunately for the majority of the planet, we only ever develop them. Right? Now, we sometimes get into the spirit body senses. For example, our intellect is often starting to be developed and our intellect comes from our spirit body's brain. Right? The spirit body has a, has a mind and that's what is part of our intelligence. So we start developing that. Unfortunately, we become often brain dominant in that process, right? But we develop that part of ourselves. But we neglect huge amounts of our spirit body senses even in our own development here on earth. But then we get onto the new age path and we start realising there's this thing called mediumship and there's healing and there's all these other things, right? And so we start to experiment with these metaphysical, what I'd call the metaphysical truths, which are all surrounding the spirit form. But for the majority of the planet, the soul development is totally neglected, isn't it? Right? Now, because it, this is a soul-to-soul -soul union that we're encouraging with our soulmate, can you see it's going to confront a lot of the belief systems that we have about the development of the other forms. 